Hi, welcome back to Kolsky Drones. So today we've got something a little bit different. Today we're going to have a look at the unique Typhoon H. So this has been out a couple of years now. And it hasn't sold, I presume, like they expected it to do, to be honest. Uh, and there is a few reasons why. I actually like this. It flies well. The picture quality is good. It's not as good as the Phantom 4, which is, I think, what the problem was. It went up against the Phantom 4 and the picture quality is not as good. So this is going to be a review of this product. Uh, in the inset down below you're probably going to see about two or three minutes of flight footage that I'm going to include, but I am going to take it out and do a proper flight test video for, uh, for the channel. But today, because the weather's so bad, I can't do that. So all I'm going to do is put an inset in of a flight that I did a while ago with it, so you can see what the video quality looks like, but it's soft compared to a Phantom 4. But it's still good, the gimbal's very, very stable. So the plus points about this is, well, the two, the main bad thing is it's massive. Look at the size of the thing. It's absolutely huge hex. It really is massive. Um, I'm struggling to get on my table here so you can keep it in shot, but I, you can see it's huge anyway. It does have folding arms, so it falls down like this, so you can get it back in. It's, it comes in like a polystyrene case. So it does fold down quite flat, but that's as small as it goes. So you, the problem with the main problem with this is you can't just take it out of the back of your car and get some quick footage. You've got to set it all up. One of the other main drawbacks is so this is the tablet that it runs on. Well, when I say tablet, this is its controller. You've probably all seen this before. Now, the controller's big, that doesn't bother me in the slightest, the controller's actually really good, the sticks feel decent, the resolution's good on the sticks, everything's good to get to, I don't even mind holding it. The main problem for me is this takes a good two minutes for it to boot up. So before this and this and the camera all talk to each other can take two minutes, it can take longer. Today I've just done it before set up and it's took about two minutes and ten seconds. That's too long. For me it is anyway. But like I say, if it was a summer's day, and I'm not in any rush to get some filming, I like to fly this because it's really nice to fly. The flight time's decent, the range is fantastic on it, so it is good. So this is the model that came out afterwards, and so they can tell by the fact it's got two antennas. So you get twin antennas, and you get, that's the antenna for the video feed that comes back to the drone. So this is the screen, so I'm going to show you more of this in a second. The other great thing about this is that camera is a 360 camera so if you keep your eye on the camera and I hit this button here it's going to pan. So if you can see it panning you can see on the screen it panning as well so you can see a picture of what it's doing and it will go 360. There's some drones you can buy that do do this but they don't go 360 and then you can just turn it off. Now, or you can just move it individually. If you put this into that position, I can just move the camera with this, with this knob here, as you can see. And I can control it myself and bring it backwards and forwards and left and right. Which I love, I absolutely love. Now, to do that, of course, you've got to get rid of the legs. So, the legs do fold up and fall back down again. They only fold up when you go into the air, but I think if I remember correctly, I haven't tried this for ages, but you can actually make it do it. So if you grab hold of the drone, you turn it upside down to test your legs, you can flick this button. And the top button on the controller here allows you to do that. So it, it is a nice feature when you get these up and it looks nice in the air if you imagine what it looks like. These fold up here. And you've got the legs totally out of shot. So it's great for getting 360 views that you can control yourself without having to pan yourself. So with this you can just actually do it with a dial. And you can just turn it and get it. It is very smooth. If you look how smooth that gimbal's moving. I don't know if it's showing as well on the video of how good the gimbal is. Movement. The gimbal's actually a really nice gimbal. It's very smooth in operation. Let's see if I can show it you in operation here. But it is extremely smooth. There's no jerk or anything like that on it. I paid 540 quid for this. Um, obviously used. I got it off. I can't remember where I bought it from actually. I might have bought it off um, 
it might come from eBay. Paid £540 for it with two batteries, one of the batteries still in its wrapper on, and it came with a wand. So this is the wand, so you can actually control the drone with this. Believe it or not, you can fly around with this. Not that I ever have and not that I ever would, but it's a little bit of a feature you can have, and you can also use it to take video. So you can have it in the air and you can take video. And I believe you can set this up. I might? Yeah, you can. You can set it up so one person can have the control and the other can have the wand. So, I suppose it's nice. I've never used it, but it did come with it in the kit. And obviously it comes with a charger. Now, so the bad points of this is, they do not have unique, for some bizarre reason, do not have smart batteries in anything they do. So, it's not a smart battery, as you can see, there's no, no measurement on there to tell you how good your battery life is, whatsoever. So when you get to fly this, I have to carry a multimeter around in my bag, and go across the two pins to see what my battery voltage is before I go fly, because there's no indication. Because I'm not going to wait two minutes for this to boot up, so this thing all boots together to give me the battery voltage, which obviously is displayed on the screen. So if you look at my battery voltage, it's there. So it's giving me 14.7 volts, and it also, if you look, you see that, 14.7 volts, and it's showing me it's got half its life. It's another thing I don't like. Why they haven't put a percentage on there like GGI and everybody else seems to have done, or even like Hotel do, which is tell you how much flight time, try to calculate what flight time it's got, even better, but another disappointing thing. So let's have a look at the controller, because the controller is one of its nicest features. I like the built-in screen, some people don't, I do. You get a sunshade that goes on here, it's not the best thing in the world, but it does work. So on here you've got all what you can expect. I'm not going to go through every feature and maybe have few hours, but you can adjust all your camera settings, it shows you your, your height and distance and all, everything you'd expect it to have. It's also got certain modes that you can use. Let me just see if I can get into them. So there you your settings for your camera, so you can adjust it to sunny, cloudy, very similar to what they are on the new Mantis Q, another unique product. This one obviously is a 3-axis gimbal and films in 4K 30 frames per second. It has flight modes like Orbit and all the rest of it, but this isn't the type of drone you'd really want for that, it's too big. This, is, this to me is a proper camera drone. But this is where it falls short because I don't think the camera is good enough to be a proper camera drone. Not at the price it was, at 500, not 500 quid. If you can pick one up second hand, yeah, they're fantastic. Because this controller is really nice. You don't have to bother taking your phone out, but you're then lugging about the big thing. There's loads of negatives and positives about this drone. The other thing you can do with this is this is a tablet. So if I hit pad at the bottom there, and I hit OK, they take me out there and it's going to open. A Android tablet. You can put apps on, you can put stuff on this, I have nothing on it because I don't really see where it is. If you hit the button there, you've got some apps, some little ones, but you've got um, the Play Store, so you can go into the Play Store if you wanted. I haven't even set it up ever, but you can add that up and go into the Play Store. And then you've got the Android buttons at the bottom of your screen. it home it goes back to the screen so I suppose that really what would you use it for I'm not really sure <laughs> I'll be honest with you I actually not sure what you'd ever use that feature for I certainly wouldn't and it's just a bit of a gimmick you can adjust your certain system settings in here so you can change it to mode 1 to mode 2 etc etc you've got a hardware monitor which shows you what switch is doing what so what switch your positions are in you see that there when I flick my switch it shows me that this is more like a monitor so like on a proper on a Probably great transmitter. You have a channel monitor that allows you to see, make sure your switches all work and your sticks are doing what they're supposed to do. This is just like that. You've then got mode select, which allows me to select mode one, mode two, etc. And then your camera. You've changed your camera. You can put different cameras on here. These are the cameras that you can have for it. Now you can also use this remote, I believe, to control other unique products. Don't quote me on that, but I, I believe I've seen a video that you can. I never have. So if we go back. So some people have complained about app disconnect problems. I've never had that issue. I've never had the app go this go down and we lose anything. I've had the occasional screen freeze when I've been a distance out with it, but never anything else. 
like I said, I'll probably, I'm going to do a flight video as soon as the weather gets better, but it might be a couple of weeks, and I'll do, I'll show you some of the features, and I'll talk you through some of the settings, and I'll show you how it flies in the air. I'll record it with my GoPro as well, so you can see it flying. You can see the operation of the legs, and you can see how smooth it is. But for now, I'll just put, you'll have already seen it, but I'll put the inset in there for it flying just outside here, just so you can get an impression of what it looks like, but it was filmed a few months ago. So that's the controller. You've got start and stop video, photos, you've got control up here that does obstacle avoidance, turn it on and off. Now when I say obstacle avoidance, it only has, you can buy a different version of this, it has a full pack on, but this has just a sensors here, but you can buy the one that has actually a full thing on the front, so you've got proper obstacle avoidance, only on the front. So that's to turn that on and off. So you've got smart, angle and return to home on this button. So smart mode allows this thing to fly but it'll only come a certain distance from you. So it won't come back right to you. You've got to be so many metres away when you take off and it will land so many metres away from you. If you've flown before I don't recommend you use that. Put it into angle mode. Angle mode is just what the standard flight mode is. What you'd expect in your DJI or anything like that. And if you look at the back it's indicated by this. It's actually it's actually purple and white, this light, and it will flash when it's got full. This has GPS and GLONASS, and then you've got your return to home, which is very accurate, by the way. It's telling me I've got GPS lost, but I'm surprised I've even had it at all in here. So, that's basically the controller. And then on the top you've got stop-start button, so that allows you to stop and start your um, motors. And then on this side you've got your up and down for your landing gear. You've got HDMI out part on the top and obviously this thing has a battery pack in here but it is rechargeable and you can have a micro SD card slot in the bottom here and your charging port and you can have headphones in here because this does talk to you. So that's the controller. So this is the drone and the controller. So this is very much I presume a Marmite kind of product. I fly DJI unique out. It doesn't bother me when I fly. I'm not a fanboy, so I don't have DJI better than this. I'll tell her better than this. I like I like what I like, and I like this. But <laughs> people that probably fly DJI won't like this. People that fly this tend not to like DJI. I, I don't really understand that bit. But I, I, I'm reviewing this on the fact that it's a drone. It's not worth a thousand quid. No, definitely not. Is it worth the £500 I paid for it? To me it is, to you it might not be because it's big. But it flies fantastically well and the video quality is good. It's not Phantom 4, but it's good. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got something out of that. I'll have the flight review up shortly in a couple of weeks. As soon as I can do it and you're going to get more of an idea of what it's like in the air and stuff. But you'll see from the video that I inserted earlier that the video quality looks good, but it's not Phantom 4. Thanks ever so much for watching. Have a fantastic day.